Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review on a glorious day. I mean, if you're in lockdown, it's got to be the best weather for it. So today I'm reviewing this fella. And it's Lincoln Green's Butter Mulch. Now, I am a fan of Harry Potter. Massive fan. Um, the films are good, but the, the books uh, take it to another level. Hopefully one day they'll make... Um, a series, but it'd be lovely to have the same actors. But I don't think I, that, that, that can't really happen because they're all obviously much older now, unless you CGI'd them. But that would uh, kind of take it away, wouldn't it? So, oh, a butter scotch flavored beer, and uh, I poured it slow as well. But look at the head on it, it's, it's getting there. So yeah, if you've ever been to um, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando or Disneyland, not Disneyland, fucking Disneyland, not Disneyland, um, in Orlando or at the Universal in, in at California and also the Warner Brothers, uh, the Harry Potter set in Lund um, Watford. My dog's a nutter. <laughs> he gets anywhere to try to sit down. I, mean, I must sort of set it out for him. Anyway, they sell but butter beer. Now, but it's a butterscotch flavoured beer and it's absolutely delicious. But there's no alcohol in it. Why? They've not bought an alcoholic version of that. I'll never know. Because obviously there's a lot of adults who would rather have a, a nice alcoholic version. So this fella is basically the the closest you're going to get to uh, butter beer. Butterscotch flavour beer. Obviously it's dark as you can see. With a massive head on it that's taking its time to go down. Uh, I think I'll drink from the bottle for a minute and I have sterilised the bottle. Nowadays everything gets sterilised. Funny times, really funny times. We've just come back from shopping and we've had to stand out on the front garden, back garden's freezing. Uh, north facing, front garden south facing, it's lovely and warm. And wipe everything down. And the funniest thing is, even had to wipe down the packs of antibacterial wipes, which is I think is hilarious, wiping down the wipes. But obviously, you can't be bringing anything into your environment. And if you don't wipe down, you know, you're not helping yourself And uh, in that respect. So I'll pour a bit more in there. So yeah, Harry Potter. Um, it's five and a half percent. And that taste of butterscotch. Oh. Mmm. Obviously, I'd prefer to drink it out of a glass, but I'm going to have to wait for the glass to, for the foam to sort itself out. Put my wine in, the, in there. My wine in there all of a sudden decided it's starting to bubble, which is funny because it's been sat there nearly two weeks. It should have been bubbling before now, really. But as long as it is fermenting and turning that nice sugar into a wine, then all good. So... Let's go back to the, the, the beer because I, I can't be done drinking from that side. Oh, we're only on four minutes. Is that four minutes or six minutes? Four minutes, that's good then. Can't be done with uh, short reviews. So yeah, five and a half percent. And what they do, they, because I know they do, but what they do, they brew this and then in secondary fermentation, that's when they add, after it's been brewed, then they add the butterscotch. Um, flavouring or essence or whatever it is. I know what it is, but I'm not giving secrets away. Um, only because somebody else blabbed it to me anyway. It, it wasn't, um, it was a, a cake shop that blabbed it to me, so I blame them. Um, because I was looking for plum essence to make myself a plum beer. Can't get it. Although they did have, did have vanilla essence, it's what my wife uses. So it can't be that hard to make your own essence. But anyway, yeah, so, 
obviously it's not the same as butter beer. If you drank butter beer, um, that butterscotch flavour really, it's uh, the creaminess, it's as close as you're going to get. Oh. So there's a maltiness to it, because obviously it's a dark beer, you can see that. Um, so you've got a malty beer with a butterscotch flavouring, that's really going for it isn't it? And um, if you're like me and you love that uh, butter beer, you're going to love this. It, um, when I was in America, Orlando, I went into their local Walmart and uh, they've got some fantastic um, spirits over there that you don't get over here. And they had a butterscotch liqueur. And um, they were the days when I really didn't drink much. Nowadays, bloody hell, I can drink like a trooper. But yeah, in them days I didn't drink much and uh, I struggled to get it down in the week we were there. Was it two weeks? Two weeks we were there, struggled to get it all down. Now I'd probably neck it in one night. Strange how, how things change. But in America you didn't really do a lot of drinking over there, apart from pop. Because they're pleased. They're not like our please. So yeah, um, you definitely do get the butterscotch. It's not in your face butterscotch. So don't be scared of that. If if you was to buy this, Lincoln Green are the only brewery that I know that do a butterscotch beer, which is ridiculous with all the breweries in the country. And why no one's thought of actually doing a butterscotch, a butter beer, a bang on butter beer with quite a bit of uh, butterscotch flavour and I'll never know. Uh, they're missing the trick. They really are missing it, missing the trick. Um, I mean, I think personally, but this butter mulch, butter bit, this butterscotch beer that they do, uh, Lincoln Green wants to get in touch with that, our, you know, the Harry Potter Studios, and say, look, we've got butterscotch beer. Do you want that? And they could add the creaminess to this, use this as a base, and add the, you know, the, a bit more butterscotch to it to get that, but also to get the... Um, the, butter, the, the alcohol uh, side of things and if anybody from Lincoln Green Bureau is watching email them I would because when this is over could be a good way of getting some coin uh, and good sales I might email them myself in fact I might tag them in when I, when I do the review when I post this review later I'm tagging them in because uh, you've got to haven't you Oh, so, uh, been to work since six o'clock, um, winding the gas lamps up, because we have the old fashioned gas lamps, have you ever watched Scrooge and films like that, the recent one, the one with Jim, Jim Carrey and, and you see the gas lamps in the streets, well that's what I've been doing today, winding gas lamps up, they have to be wound up every two weeks and you have to change the clock and obviously gas blows out, they, have, they are, um, they're not like normal lamps on streets, you know, there's no issues with normal lamps on streets. You, they hardly ever go out. These gas lamps blow out, the windows get broke, because idiots chucking stones and stuff. And van drivers getting a bit close and hitting them. Um, and they, they are a task. But the people on the Nottingham Park Estates, that's what they pay for um, as part of their it's like an extra bit of council tax to look after these lamps because obviously it's historic. It, it's, um, it's one. You know, there's not many places in the UK that have still got them. There are places, and uh, I'll tell you something interesting. One of the, the some of the lamps now are controlled by like a battery power, and it turns them on and off basically, and. Um, the bloke, the bloke who did it, and you can look on the internet about this. Uh, Nottingham Park State, there's got a lot of good history um, 
with regards to it, you know, the Duke of Newcastle who used to own it. Um, and obviously it's at, it's at the back of Nottingham Castle. So when Nottingham Castle reopens, it's a good thing to go in the castle, have a look around the castle, and then pop into the park estate and have a look around, and you'll probably see me working and not drinking. But anyway, um, yeah, there's one of the blokes who's, is this inventor bloke, very smart man. Although he can talk for, talk for ages, worse than me, a lot worse. And um, he's created a lamppost that runs off dog shit. So you get, you pick your dog muck up, obviously you don't put your bag in, and then you like put it in a chute, and the, the methane powers the light. How strange is that? Can you imagine? <coughs> dear, oh dear. But you'd think it'd only do it when it's, when it's fresh, because obviously when it goes hard, there's no smell coming from it, so. But anyway. There must be a solution to keep oh, I'm not going down that road. So yeah. A very nice but scotch but like I say, these places, Universal Orlando, um, our own the studios down in London. Um, you're missing a trick. You need to be um, selling alcohol version of bottle beer as well. Because I know they sell well, because it's gorgeous. But you imagine adding this and then topping it over. Whoa, oh dear. There'd be a lot of very happy Harry Potter fans. And probably half a few, a few junk ones as well. And can you imagine somebody like linking like this brewery here, uh, Nottinghamshire Brewery, um, getting that to happen, and then actually under and actually brewing the beer for them and adding that bit more to it to make it a Harry Potter beer? Wow, that's how business you know can get go from so many bottles to a lot more because that place that the, the studios in London. Uh, just outside London, the amount of people that go through there—it's like a, you know—I think they ought to make a Harry Potter theme park down there. Um, they've got the space, put rides in, and that. And you've also, you've already got the footfall that goes through and paying so much. And you, you're not telling me that. I, I mean, if I went to the studios to look round and look at—I mean, it's such an interesting place to go to. It's it's a, it's a day's worth of um, looking round. It really is. You can't do it in a couple of hours. Um, especially if you're, if you're a fan, there's so much there, so much there, and uh, you imagine the theme park attached to it. Wow, the money they make, it, it would be, and the theming that you could, you know, have. I just wish we had a, a Disney and a Universal in this country. Yeah, we've got Alton Towers and that, but you, sometimes the Americans, their theming is just ridiculously brilliant compared to ours, sadly. Uh, no, I suppose a lot of it's down to money and IP, you know, and intellectual property. Um, and that's where, if you've got more cash, you can pay for the best intellectual property. And it's how you make use of it, obviously. And the likes of Disney and Universal are very good at that with theme parks. So, my eyes decided to go gammy. Um, we've still got a bit, to, a bit to go with this. So the butterscotch is there. It's not, shall we say, too much butterscotch. It's just nice. And that multi backbone to it um, brings out a nice bit. It's five and a half percent, but to be honest, it don't taste like that. That don't taste that strong, but it's got a lovely strength to it. And you know the best thing? This was on their out of date section. It was a pound a bottle. <laughs> so I picked up four because uh, one for review, three for necking. <sighs> at some stage, at least. I need to build at the back of this beer room 
on the back wall, get some pallets and build a, a big shelving unit across the whole length and then put all my bottles on so many shelves. One, just so that, because if I fancy doing a certain review one day, then you've got it there. Sometimes you just fancy a certain beer. At the moment, I'm just grabbing whatever's in front of me. It's black on a lovely day like today. It's, you know, you really want to be drinking ciders and lagers, really. But I wanted to get this this review out of the way because it, it needed to be reviewed, and uh, especially with the um, not like an Harry Potter connection with the butter beer and that. I personally think that Lincoln Green Brewery could make a lot of serious uh, money. In my opinion, anyway. And I'll make sure I tag them in. Oh, so. Still retaining that head, that um, off-white head, more of a beige head, isn't it? Uh, black in colour, off beige head, multi, multi backbone to it with a butterscotch um, flavour. And you could do this really with like plum in that. If I could get a plum essence, a decent plum essence that comes in about a litre bottle, because you need you need a lit you need a litre to do a barrel. Um, a, you know, a 40 pint barrel. The only stuff I've seen is stuff the um, flavour maggots in. And I don't think that's the right sort of stuff. I don't think you could drink that. Unless you use real plums, but you'd need a hell of a lot of plums. I was going to buy a plum tree last year, but... I mean, how many plums would you get off a tree? Would you get enough? Oh, what a beautiful bear. I could just sit here and chill, drink beer and just enjoy the sun. Yet the wife sat in the front room. Oh, I'm not going out in the garden. The weather, it's beautiful. Apart from the wind. So, for a beer, that's the closest you're going to get at this time to butter beer that I've seen anyway. Um, very nice. Oh, not a massive aroma to it. Not really getting a lot of butterscotch on the aroma. But in the taste, um, yeah, lovely butterscotch. Uh, it's not too in your face butterscotch. And I suppose, you know, if you was going to, you could make it in your face, you could do that. But I'm sure they could anyway. I don't know if I could. Um, but you don't have to add certain things to this to turn it into, you know, to make it into a butter, same as what they sell at Harry Potter and Universal Orlando. But back to normality. Um, yeah, very nice. Nice, malty, dark beer. Like a, Basically, it's like a stout or a porter with a butterscotch flavouring. If you're going to run it, you know, put it down as, um, as that. Um, for me, very nice, uh, great tasting throughout, um, very Moorish, I'm after another one there. I've got four little, three more little beauties down there, and, and I got it for a pound a bottle. Um, they do sell it in nine litres for 20 quid, I think it's, not nine litres, is it nine pints for 20 quid, five litres? Something like that anyway. Yeah. Basically, ten bottles of ten bottles of this, twenty quid. So I, I did well getting it for a pound, um, and they had quite a lot as well. So well worth well worth sampling it. And I'm, I must try and uh, um, get some contacts at Lincoln Green so I can go down there and get more beers. You know, when we're shopping down that area, because obviously you're not really allowed to go out and do these things. I was sat next to a cop of this police call, police call this morning, this afternoon on the way home, and I thought, I wonder if they pull people over just to say to them, what are you doing? But I've not seen it, but I suppose they do in certain places. But anyway, great multi, um, great dark beer, 
a lovely butterscotch flavour. If you are a Harry Potter fan and you you add butter beer, add the likes of Universal Orlando, uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, or the studios in London, then this is as close as you're going to get. And uh, for an alcoholic version, and uh, it's lovely. I don't know if Lincoln Green Brewery do. Um, deliveries or send it all over the country but it's something you could ask them because a lot of beers are delivered these days all over the place by couriers and uh, if the if the need is there and the amount of people that want to buy it is there then why not make that money yeah, you're going to charge them probably six quid, whatever, for for uh, delivery, you know, through a courier. But it's worth it, isn't it? You know, to get the pennies. Right. So, out of five, I nearly forgot. <clears throat> one of my favourite beers. Um, it's been one of the beers that I've loved ever since I've seen it in uh, Link, um, Little John and Robin Hood in Arnold, Nottingham. And uh, also I've drank it at Robin Hood Beer Festival. It's, it's a go-to beer for me. I look at all the other beers I, I see, and it's a go-to beer. It's my favourite beer from this particular brewery, and uh, I absolutely love it. And to get it for a quid for a bottle. What's not to love? Jesus Christ, hey? And I've stopped, I'm necking too long. Out of five, 4.6 out of five. One of my favourites. Right, thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers. And obviously, stay safe.